In 10 years, one company will dominate the global economy, and it's probably not the one you think. Right now, in 2025, seven titans are locked in a silent war, spending hundreds of billions of dollars to build the world's first true artificial general intelligence. The leader won't just lead the market. They will be the market. We've all seen the headlines. Microsoft's partnership with OpenAI, NVIDIA's impossible stock run, Meta's open source gambit, but most of what you hear is just noise. What if you could cut through that? What if you could see the real metrics? Not just R&D spending, but the quality of their innovation. Not just their compute power, but who actually owns the data. Who is building a fortress and who is building a house of cards? I've done the research so that you don't have to. I've been deep diving into the latest Q3 earnings reports, patent filings, and infrastructure audits, and the results are shocking. Today, we are ranking the top publicly traded AI companies, from the weakest to the strongest. And I promise you, the company that lands at number one isn't just winning, it's running a completely different race. This is the 2025 AI Leadership Assessment. To do this, we can't use hype. We have to use a scorecard. Every company was graded on six critical metrics. One, R&D investment. Are they spending the money? Two, innovation quality. Are their patents and models actually any good? Three, compute infrastructure. Do they own the chips? Four, vertical integration. Can they build their own stack or do they depend on others? Five, ecosystem strength. Do they have the developers and users to create a moat? And six, the most important real world AI data leadership because AI is nothing without data to train it. Each company gets a score from one to 10 for each metric. The final average is their definitive rank. We're starting from the bottom. The results will surprise you. And before we get started, I have to be honest with you. This is personally painful for me because I am a massive Apple and Tesla fan and I was hoping for them to do better. I have an iPhone, I'm editing this video on my Mac, I'm deep in the Apple ecosystem. In regards to Tesla, I have a Cybertruck Foundation series, and I own Tesla stock. These are my companies. And that is exactly why this report was so shocking. Because when you force yourself to ignore the hype, ignore the brand loyalty, and just follow the hard data on this scorecard, you get a very different picture. With that being said, kicking us off in last place is the world's most valuable company, Apple. With a final score of 6.5 out of 10. This might seem crazy, but the data is clear. Apple is playing a different game, one defined by a single massive trade-off. Their ecosystem is their strength, a perfect 10 out of 10. There is no debate there. They have over 2.3 billion active devices, creating a developer economy worth over $1.3 trillion. They own the high-end consumer. But their AI strategy is crippled by their own brand promise, privacy. This is the privacy paradox. To build powerful AI, you need massive, centralized user data. Apple's entire philosophy is built on not doing that. As a result, their real-world data leadership score is a pathetic 3 out of 10. This directly impacts their innovation. With no data to train on, their in-house models are weak. Their AI patent volume is tiny, just 191 in 2024. This has forced them into a humiliating position. They are paying their biggest rival, Google, $1 billion a year. Why? To use a custom 1.2 trillion parameter Gemini model just to make Siri functional in 2025. Apple isn't leading. They're outsourcing their core intelligence. When you're paying your competitor for your brain, you are not in the race to win. You're just a customer. Also at the bottom, with a near identical score of 6.58, is Tesla. Tesla is the perfect mirror image of Apple. Where Apple has no data, Tesla has one of the strongest data moats on Earth, a 9.5 out of 10. Its fleet of over 5 million vehicles acts as a constant real-world data collection engine, gathering billions of miles of real-world driving data. This is data no one else has. Not Google, not Amazon. It is an unmatched asset. But the company is failing to convert that data into dominance. A mountain of gold is useless if you can't get it out of the ground. Tesla's ambitious Dojo supercomputer project, which was meant to be their shovel, was officially disbanded in August 2025. This is a massive failure and a huge setback. While their new Cortex cluster is powerful, its 81,000 GPU equivalent is a fraction of what the hyperscalers are building. Worse, their ecosystem is struggling. Only 12% of owners are actually paying for full self-driving. That's a tiny adoption rate. Tesla has the world's best data, but they lack the compute to process it and the ecosystem to monetize it. They are a data giant with no arms. Okay, we're two companies in and we're about to get to the real contenders. The top five are in a league of their own. But before we do, I have to ask you a question. Based on what you've seen so far, Apple's privacy paradox versus Tesla's data-rich, compute-poor strategy, which of these two do you think has a better chance of solving their core problem in the next five years? Let me know in the comments right now. It's a fascinating debate and I wanna know what you think. And while you're down there, if you're getting value from this analysis, please hit that subscribe button. This will let me know you want more videos like this. All right, climbing into the top five, we have the Kingmaker itself, NVIDIA, with a score of 8.33. 
NVIDIA is a fascinating case. They scored a perfect 10 in innovation, a perfect 10 in compute, and a perfect 10 in ecosystem strength. Their R&D spend is staggering, over $15 billion, leading to the number one spot in AI patent citations. Their dominance is built on one thing, CUDA. This software layer has a 92% market share, locking in 6 million developers. It's a virtuous cycle. Everyone builds for CUDA, so every company must buy NVIDIA's chips. They are the arms dealer for the entire AI war, and they are making a fortune. So why are they only number five? Why does this Titan score so low? Because of one catastrophic single point of failure. Their real world data score is a one out of 10, by design. NVIDIA has zero data moat. They sell the shovels, they don't own the gold mines. This makes them incredibly powerful right now while everyone is in a panic to buy hardware. But it makes them deeply vulnerable. If a competitor, like Google with its TPUs, Amazon with Tranium, or Meta with its own silicon, builds a chip that's good enough and cheaper, NVIDIA's entire kingdom is at risk. Their customers are the very companies trying to replace them. NVIDIA has no data, no user base to fall back on. They are a brilliant, fragile empire. In fourth place, we have Meta, with a score of 8.75. If NVIDIA's strategy is to sell arms, Meta's strategy is to give them away for free. Their secret weapon is Llama, and it is one of the most brilliant strategic moves in this entire war. Meta has poured billions into making Llama 4.0 a top-tier model. Then, they open-sourced it. It's getting over a million downloads a day. Why would they do this? Two reasons. First, it commoditizes the AI model market. It makes it impossible for companies like OpenAI to sell their models at a high premium. It's a direct attack on their rivals. Second, and more importantly, it makes Meta's own data infinitely more valuable. Meta has a perfect 10 out of 10 ecosystem, built on the social and virtual data from their 4 billion users. As all other models become free and worthless, Meta's unique, proprietary data, the one thing Llama wasn't trained on, becomes the most priceless asset in the world. They are backing this with a $71 billion CapEx budget for 2025, aiming for over 1.3 million GPUs and a 5 gigawatt supercomputer pipeline. Meta is not to be underestimated. They are playing a long game, and they are playing to win. In third place, just barely edging out Meta, is Microsoft with a score of 8.83. Microsoft is an enterprise fortress. Their strength is their ecosystem, a perfect 10. They have 70% of the Fortune 500 locked into Azure. GitHub, LinkedIn, and their trust moat give them access to the world's most valuable and most guarded data set, enterprise data. Their masterstroke was their investment in OpenAI. In October 2025, they renegotiated the deal. For a 27% stake, now valued at $135 billion, they have secured all of OpenAI's intellectual property until 2032. This de-risks their biggest dependency and integrates the world's most famous AI brand directly into their products. But that dependency is also their core weakness. Their vertical integration score is a 6 out of 10. They don't make their own high-end chips for training, leaving them at the mercy of NVIDIA. And they don't own their flagship AI model, they just have a license. Microsoft is a powerful empire, but it's an empire built on an alliance. It's incredibly smart, but it's not fully independent. And in this war, independence is power. This brings us to our runner-up, the Switzerland of AI, Amazon, with a powerful 9.08. Amazon is, without a doubt, a true infrastructure king. Their 2025 CapEx budget is $125 billion. That is not a typo. They are spending more than Microsoft and Google combined. With that money, they have achieved a perfect 10 in vertical integration. They build their own Tranium chips. They build their own Neuron SDK to run them. They have their bedrock platform for developers and their own Titan models. They don't need anyone. And they've used this position of total independence to become the Switzerland of AI. They don't care who wins the model wars because they host everyone. They have an $8 billion investment in Anthropic and they just signed a $38 billion deal for OpenAI to use AWS. Amazon profits no matter who wins. They are the ultimate arms dealer, the ultimate infrastructure provider. Their only weakness, their in-house model innovation is just good, not great, with a six out of 10. But when you own the entire playground, it almost doesn't matter. They are the bank and the bank always wins. And that brings us to number one. The company that is so far ahead, it's almost unfair. The company that doesn't just score well, but breaks the scorecard. With a near-perfect score of 9.83 out of 10, Google. Google is the only company to score a perfect 10 in 5 of the 6 categories. R&D, Innovation, Compute, Ecosystem, and Data. And their one other score is a 9. Let's just look at the facts because they are staggering. 1. R&D, a $55 billion TTM spend. This is dominant. 2. Innovation. Their AI patent quality is number one in the world. Their new Gemini 2.5 Pro model is the number one ranked model on the planet outperforming all rivals on the official leaderboards. Three, ecosystem, a perfect 10. They have the human-generated data from Search, YouTube, and 3.5 billion Android devices. Their cloud backlog is $155 billion. 
but it's the data and compute moats that are truly unbeatable. Their secret weapon is Google search. With 8.5 billion queries every single day, it's the world's largest repository of human intent and knowledge, enabling AI models like Gemini to understand and respond to complex questions in ways that outpace competitors. Second, compute. They have their custom TPU chips, which are perfectly optimized for their own models. They have so much compute that they were still able to partner with Anthropic to give them access to 1 million TPUs, a compute cluster so large it's hard to comprehend. Google is the only company that fully controls the entire stack at a world-leading level. They build the chips, they own the platforms, they collect the data, and they produce the number one model. They are not just playing the game, they invented it. Everyone else is just paying rent. This is the new landscape of power. The race for AI dominance is the single most important story of our time in 2025, and it's clear who has the lead. If this analysis opened your eyes, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. My entire channel is dedicated to giving you the unvarnished truth about the tech that's changing our world. And since you made it this far, you're clearly serious about this. YouTube's algorithm actually knows you'll love this next video I've picked out for you. Click it right here, and I'll see you in the next one.